All right. Pursuant to the governor's orders suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 18, this meeting of the DAAC is being conducted via remote participation. I'd like to take a roll call for roll call to check and make sure everyone's can uh, hear and be heard so that your audio is working properly. So I'll start with the chair. Myra Ross. Uh, and then Saren. I'm here. Okay. Tori. I'm here. All right. Elise. I'm here. All right. I'd just like to remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded to the web um, and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast on the town's YouTube channel. Um, and so I now have uh, 1131. Myra, if you'd like to call the meeting to order. Okay. Um, that is a statement that I guess I was supposed to have always read, but I didn't um, have it. Or no, I I guess I I just thought we didn't need to do it, but we do need to do it. So um, thanks, Pamela. <clears throat> and um, at the beginning of the meeting, um, does anyone have any announcements? <clears throat> no announcements. Okay, I have an announcement. Um, we did hold interviews. On March 22nd, we interviewed three people. Um, those people were all, we thought, qualified and representative of different constituencies of people with disabilities or different interests regarding people with disabilities. And so Paul was left um, with the decision about who to appoint. And I got an email last week that Tori has, um, Tori was one of the people whose time, whose term was up. Um, and Tori, Paul talked to you. Is that what happened? Yes. Paul and I spoke and I'm going to be stepping down. Okay, that's very too bad. I am very sorry to see you go. Um, I hope we can get you back um, at some point. But um, so Paul will be appointing the three people that we interviewed. I do not know when we are at liberty to release the names of those three people. Um, so I'm not going to because I don't know what the status of those notifications and appointments are. Um, do you, Pamela? So I know the process, which is that he will bring the names uh, forward to the town council and um, they will approve his nominations and then but uh, those individuals will be uh, sworn in and asked to join the board. Um, I don't know where he is in the process. Um, it's it, from my past experience, it's been a pretty quick turnaround. So if it hasn't gone before the town council recently, my, my uh, I suspect that it will go um, the next time that they meet. I wrote to Paul asking him if he could let those three people know about our meeting um, today because of the guest speakers, um, even if they couldn't vote. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where that is either. So I don't think we have any of them with us. Um, do we, all the people that are not committee members, I believe are here other than Jennifer Moyston are here for the library presentation, is that correct? Um, it, so I, uh, I don't see them at, um, at see anyone in the panelists, and I just um, promoted Marty to a panelist. So, uh, oh, so Marty's she'll be, here. Yeah, excellent, great. All right, I didn't hear the notifications to know who came in. Great. Okay, now we have Marty. Mm -hmm. So we have 
our entire committee at the moment, and I believe there are some other people present other than Jennifer Moyston, people who came, I heard Austin Surratt and somebody named Rachel, which I just missed the last name, but I don't know if any of the people that will be appointed are here. I think possibly so, not. Yeah, I don't see any of the individuals who will be appointed here okay. yet. Um, um, at, from my memory of the names, I'm I'm trying to <laughs> remind myself. Yeah, I don't remember all their names. Yeah, either. But um, two of them. Right. The um, the other guests who are our panelists who are here to discuss the Jones Library um, okay. project are um, coming in. So we would said okay for them to join around 11:40, oh, and so a few yep. of them are are entering. Perfect. Okay, so that was the only other, that was the only announcement that I have, but we should have a full complement of membership at some point in the near future. Mm -hmm. And at 1230, Jeff Dugan from Massachusetts Office on Disability will be visiting us to talk to us about um, disability commissions around the state and what disability commissions can do and how it would make a difference if we were one. And so at the moment, do we have the right people to begin the library presentation? We do, although I don't see, she, um, Sharon has not joined us yet. Oh, there she is. So I think that uh -huh. okay. that we do have the right uh, folks okay. here to, to join, so. Perfect. Okay, so I would be happy to turn it over to Sharon or whoever wants to be the first person to speak about the Jones Library building project. So let me be the first to speak. Um, my name is Austin Sarrett. Um, I'm on the Library Board of Trustees, and I have the pleasure of uh, chairing the Jones Library building um, committee. Welcome to our meeting. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank you for meeting with us. Um, the conversation that we're going to have is incredibly important to the design of the library and to the work that we are all doing. Uh, the trustees have committed uh, to the design of a library, which we believe will be uh, accessible uh, to all, and we hope will be accessible to all, and we intend to make it accessible to all. We intend to design this library thinking through the principles of universal design to make sure that accessibility is at the center of what it is that we are of, of what it is that we are, what it is that we are doing, and what you're going to hear about today is a, a progress report on where we are um, in this um, in this um, effort. And we're really eager for your uh, reactions to help us see whether or not we are on the right track, or, or what, if any, changes um, need to be uh, need to be made. So again, I want to thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Sharon and. Uh, Sharon will um, introduce you to Tim from Collier. Sharon. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Austin. Uh, I am Sharon Sherry. I'm the director of the Jones. Um, and why don't we start by um, in introducing our team? Um, so we have Tim. Would you like to introduce yourself first? Um, yes, good morning. Hi, everybody. Uh, my Hi. name is Tim Alex. I'm with Collier's Project Leaders. We're the owner's project managers for the project. Beautiful. And from our uh, architecture team, Feingold Alexander Architects, we have Ellen. Hi, I'm Ellen Ancelone, uh, principal at Feingold Alexander, working on this project for a long time. Uh, and I'll let David introduce himself. He's going to actually be the one to take us through the plans. Go ahead, David. I am David Lightman. I'm with Feingold Alexander Architects. I'm an architect. I'm championing the interior portion of, of the design. And we also have Josephine. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Josephine Penta. I'm a project manager for John's Library Project at Feingold Alexander. <laughs> And then we have uh, representatives from Berkshire Design Group who are working on our landscape design. And so, Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel Leffler, principal at Berkshire Design Group, and I'm here with Jessica Schoendorf, also with Berkshire Design. Wow, this is quite the group. 
Well, thank you so much for all of you for giving us your time. Thank you so much. Great. So I, it sounds like we are uh, going to uh, send it over to Dave. Dave, are you going to share your screen? Yes, I'll share my screen and talk about the interior portion. Um, and once I'm done with that, we'll pass it off to, to Rachel and her team to talk about the exterior portion. So let me share my screen. Let me know if you can all can see that. Wonderful. I'm just going to let you know that I am totally blind and one of the other members is uh, a low vision person. And so if you can use as much language as possible, that would be helpful. Uh, understood. I, I, I appreciate that information. Thank yeah, you. I can't read that at all. So I count on that. Thank you. And, and I'll do, um, do my best to zoom in for the areas that, that we'll, we'll be talking about. Um, and I'll try my best to, to verbalize the, this um, for, for those of you who, who need additional commentary. Um, just a first high level um, overview. The project is four floors um, utilizing the existing 1927 building. Um, the 1990s edition will be demolished and a new um, uh, addition will be built north of that. Um, I'm first going to start on level one. I'll then move down to the ground level, what we're calling the garden level, and then we'll go back up to levels two and to level three. So we are currently looking at the level one plan. Um, Torrentu North is up. Um, here at the bottom of the page is the existing um, entry off of Amenity Street, which will be the main entry for the library still in, in this um, new rendition. Um, and a couple of things that I want to kind of first mention is that the entirety of the building will be meeting MAAB and ADA and all of the kind of local um, building codes. So we're, we're designing to those standards. Um, and I want to call out a couple of elements that I think are, are um, important. And, and that's what I have color coded. And I'll talk about those um, in, in more specificity as, as we walk through. So we're we'll walking through the main um, original 1927 entrance. Um, as you move through that, um, you'll then north of that enter the new space. There will be a lobby and a circulation desk um, directly north of that. This circulation desk will have a um, accessible uh, heights component for someone in a wheelchair um, that we have called out as um, two feet and 10 inches um, max um, <clears throat> at that location. Um, <clears throat> there will That's be a new part of the circulation desk that you're talking Correct. about. Correct. This okay. is the, the new circulation yep. desk. In the, okay. I have highlighted in purple the area that will be the accessible height. Um, the northern part of that circulation desk will be a, a higher height, but um, at least half of the desk we are proposing to be accessible height. Just to the right here in yellow, you see is the elevator. It's gonna be a new elevator that connects all four levels of, of the project. And it'll be the only elevator in the building. The existing elevator will be um, demolished. So this is a new elevator to code that um, we have a symbol here which denotes a five foot uh, diameter um, wheelchair turning radius. So um, the elevator will be able to accommodate um, someone going into the elevator and making a, a, a turn as, as they um, uh, position themselves there. If we go further to the, to the west, just behind the main circulation desk, we're entering the children's area. Um, in this children's area, there will be also a youth circ desk. And again, it will be similar to the main circulation desk where there will be accessible counter at two foot, 10 inches off the ground um, for someone to um, interact with, with one of the, the library assistants. All other counters throughout the library, which I've noted um, in pink and the purplish color here um, will also be accessible height. Um, and some of them have sinks. In all instances, we are denoting them as two foot, 
10 inches maximum off the, the finished floor. Um, so they are all accessible and anyone could um, um, reach the necessary items that, that, are, that are there. Throughout the building here, we have this adjacent to, to the circle. I have a question about that. Uh, yes. Are they going to be able to roll their chair up so that they, they can actually use the counter? I mean, I think I'm not a wheelchair user, but I think they have to be able to roll their legs under the counter. You can't just be in front of it. So are they just cool. counters or are they cabinets under them? So we have a, a mix of both. So there are where okay. we have a sink, we have an angled um, panel that allows someone in wheelchair to um, move underneath. Um, okay. And we have a, I'm currently showing a couple of diagrams that indicate that angled panel. And the panel is going to be positioned at sinks to, so you don't um, knock into any pipes. Um, that are that are beyond, and all of those are meeting um, code. There are certain scenarios where we do have cabinets, um, um, and those again, the depth off the the wall will be no greater than two feet, um, and no higher than two foot ten inches off the finished floor. We have two people with mobility impairments on this committee, and I don't know. Um, if you have tested any of these, um, I mean, they might meet code, but they might be difficult to use um, anyway. And I, I don't know if anyone has tested these parameters, but if not, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, Understood. We, and let or, me just chime in. We ahead. have tested these and actually there, um, you can see these sinks at Holyoke Library. Okay. We did. What is the so purpose of the sinks? What, yeah, I was just going to ask, what are the sinks for? Is it a bathroom? Uh, so, it? yes, there are sinks located at each of the, the, the restrooms, as well as there are some staff sinks, um, depending on the department that they're in, whether they be um, for a workspace or a uh, staff lounge space um oh. specifically the sink that i it was first called out oh. here is in a staff workspace adjacent to the youth circ desk oh, i thought okay. they were at the desk themselves and i was no i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> so i so that's good you are assuming that there will be um complete access for employees who use wheelchair yes okay that that, that is correct yeah, good. okay okay um so thinking more about the 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 sinks, I'm looking now. I don't, there's we have three um, single user restrooms um, just off of the main spine of the library, just north of the circulation desk, which I'm calling out here in green. Um, I'm indicating that you see the dashed uh, circle is a uh, 60 inch, five foot um, diameter turning radius for someone in a wheelchair. Um, and all of these um, sinks match the, let me go back to the, the image here. We'll have the panel, the sloped panel underneath the surface. So someone again in a wheelchair can um, go up to it and essentially be underneath um, the sink as, as they wash their hands and, and um, reach for the faucet, et cetera. Can I just insert my concern? I use the wheelchair and many of these play, uh, bathrooms, they put the soap dispensers in such a height that I can hardly reach. So yep. it, can, can that be addressed you know, while you're designing this? You know, people don't even realize it, but I usually end up just using water to wash my hands because I cannot reach the soap dispenser. And and that would go. I don't know if you're going to have blowers instead of paper towels, or but that would also um, the hand dryers. That would also include the hand dryers. Yeah. Um, Understood. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll make sure okay. that the reach range and uh, yeah. um, access to anything additionally, you know, in a, the restroom other than maybe the faucet itself, like the soap dispenser, as well as yeah. Yeah. Um, 
paper towels or the blow dryers are, are accessible and in, a, in an accommodating reach range. So in that vein, as a blind person, I will tell you that the biggest issue in bathrooms um, is finding paper towels after yes. you use the sink. You can't mm. find them. You nope. feel all over the walls. Um, <laughs> it's ridiculous because usually people just hang them up wherever and don't even think about it. Um, yeah. And um, so thinking about where to put the drying implements as well as the soap is really, um, as far as accessibility is important. Like it has, there has to be a logical path from the sink to the exit that includes those, you know, the paper towels or the blower. Um, it can't be on the other side of the room just cause, oh, here's some space. We can sort of stick it up on the wall right here. Um, it's the biggest architectural flaw with every bathroom. Every once in a while you go into one and you say, oh my God, somebody actually thought about this and did it right. But it's very rare yeah. um, to find the paper towels. Um, Elise probably can see them. I oh, can't yeah. see them, but they are very hard to find if you can't see them. Even if I can see a little bit, I'm still searching because it's not okay. in a logical place. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, there probably isn't any code about that in the, you know, where the paper <laughs> towels have to be hung, but it's, a, you know, if you're talking accessibility, it's a big issue. Yeah. So there's another problem too that's always an issue is where is the trash dispenser or the trash receptacle Correct. going? Because <laughs> right now, if it's going on the floor, there's very little space for it and it will definitely not be near the sink. Right. Yeah. Is that what that little square? There's a little square with an opening in each bathroom. What is that? I don't know what that is. That is a baby changing station. Oh, okay. Um, it's be, oh. Um, mounted on the wall. Yeah. Um, so someone has an infant and need to change a diaper. Yep. Um, yeah. So where's would, the trash receptacle going? Good question. <laughs> that is also, a great question. We haven't, problem. we haven't, okay. um, Identify that, but I, our intentions would be it would be wall mounted and it would be a system that is uh, paired with the trash itself and if there's um, paper towel dispenser as well. And it, I think based off what I'm hearing is it's probably best if it's in reach range from the faucet itself. Um, yeah. And so we will we will look at that to 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 it ensure that means that it's, it's going to be it, behind the door. Right. Just so you know that. It doesn't need to be in reach range from the faucet. It needs to be in a logical place when you talk about the, you know, the, the walking out of a bathroom. So when a lot of the time, if you can find it, then you have to at least bang around with your cane all over the floor to find the trash can. Um, so putting it as one unit is great, but if you're using a blower, obviously there's no reason for that. So right. one unit is great rather than just having to leave it somewhere on the floor. But the the what Marty said about it being behind the door is not going to work. No. <laughs> Understood. No, if you put anything behind a door where you have to stop and do something, somebody coming in is going to smack you in the head. Well, That's these are correct. at least these are single use toilet oh, rooms, so that okay, the door not, will be closed, and it's not possible to okay. do it. They're just going to have to fatten up the wall. Um, yes. Okay. Okay, I misunderstood. Yeah, my bad. and it is better if the paper towels, the receptacle, and the soap are all in reach and forward of the sink. Yes. The problem is it's really tough to reach all the way to the back wall. Understood. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Silly little things like this, but... <laughs> um, we all have we all have issues in bathrooms finding what we need to find, and she's right. Sometimes you don't use soap because you can't find it, mm -hmm. and sometimes yep. you walk out with dripping wet hands in the winter yep. because you cannot find the paper towels or you cannot reach them. That's well, right. that's why the paper towels need to be within reach because you really don't want to have wet hands and drip water everywhere. It That's needs true. to be yep. so that you're pulling the towels adjacent to the sink over your lap. And yeah, just, it's a problem. It's 
bathrooms, I... restrooms are always tough. Yep. Yes, yes, they are. I appreciate your input, though. It's really valuable. Very few of them are done right. Is Very this good. going to be gender neutral bathrooms? So, uh, yes, essentially, um, anyone could use them when, when they're available. Speaking of that, I should, um, maybe it's best to then, let's go down to the garden level, because um, there is a gender inclusive restroom um for there's eight stalled restroom on the garden level which i have now i pulled up here um this is to orient you on the garden level we have um so a large meeting room as well as a small meeting room for larger events and functions um and so this mm -hmm. inclusive restroom will be to support those events as well as the, the library in full um this inclusive restroom is gender neutral um, and the idea is that um, anyone can can use any of the, the stalls here three of the stalls are accessible two of which will be wheelchair accessible that i'm showing here in the southern portion of the room and one will be the ambulatory accessible stall so not wheelchair accessible but allow someone with grab bars um, within that that specific stall um, in this gender inclusive uh, restroom, do, does each one of the stalls have a floor to ceiling door with a lock on it? Each door will have its own lock and uh, our intentions are to have an indicator. So if you're on the exterior side, you would know that the door is locked. The partitions itself um, will be a couple inches start a couple inches above the ground um, and um, won't go all the way to the, the ceiling, but would be um, at least six feet in, in height. So anyone who's within one of the stalls would be entirely screened. I have a question. Um, in the eight stall bathroom, Will the aisle between the stall and the wall be wide enough, not just for a wheelchair, but somebody like coming out of a stall and then somebody going in? There's a lot of times that I find a traffic jam. I use a guide dog, so we take up a lot of room, you know, and I'm just wondering, I've, I've often found trying to get to the sink and trying to get to a stall when there's someone else also trying to do the same thing. So is it wide enough? Yes, so the, the okay. distance between um, the stalls on either side of the room is um, at least uh, after, to at least 10 feet, if not more. Mm -hmm. And then the distance um, off of the, uh, the, the sinks itself is mm -hmm. um, a little greater than five feet. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm indicating the five foot wheelchair radius turn. Um, ah. You may be able to see on my screen. And so oh. we are showing ample space for someone to oh, maneuver. I see. Oh. Good. Thank you. So in addition to this inclusive restroom for eight stalls, there is a family restroom just off to the side. Um, it's an, again, another one of those single user stalls, but in case someone is with small children and they're down here, they could use that as well. Mm. As we look here at the garden level, I just want to also address the, the small and large meeting rooms. Um, the large meeting room that I'm showing here in blue um, can accommodate 200 individuals. And there will be, there's an intention to have microphones and speakers for amplification. And so with that, there will be an assistive listening device. Nice. There is in the small meeting room, which is um, maybe approximately 25 to, to seat 25 individuals. We are currently um, intending to also have an assistive listening device there as well. Thank you, because that is not required in the code. So we're glad you're doing that. <laughs> Looking further around the garden level. So again, Part of this building is the original 1927 building, um, and there is indication of the exterior wall in this thicker gray line. Um, 
this is about maybe a two foot thick wall, give, give or take. And so there's a couple moments where there isn't the proper um, clearances in a, in a typical door. So at these two doors uh, accessing the Civil War tablet exhibit, as well as a special collection exhibit, we'll have an assistive door operator um, because um, we're not able to, to accommodate the clearances there. But all other doors, we are intending to have the clearances for push and pull sides um, and all openings will be, we're designing to three feet. There are a couple of scenarios being that we're dealing with an existing building that the door openings would be two foot 10 minimum, but we're designing to three feet door openings. Additionally, I wanna call out, we have a couple of ramps in the project um, here, one on the garden level, which is in the special collection storage, and then two on level two that will be more publicly accessible. Nice. All three ramps are one to 12 slope. Um, in this case, this, you know, this is a 20 foot length of, of ramp. Um, so there will be, uh, handrails on either side and the width is um, minimum would be five feet per MAAB. Hmm. And I'm again calling out a couple of the counter spaces that we've talked about. They will all be two foot 10 above finished floor um, and that's denoted in the, in the purple. Any comments or questions before uh, we jump up to level two. Yeah, um, it's a general question about color scheme. Um, and I wondered if you have gotten that far. If I may, I'm gonna ask Ellen and Josephine if you could comment on that. Oh, good question, yeah. We have not gotten there yet, but do you okay. have thoughts? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I used to be a low vision person um, and the color of the carpet, um, if this, a, okay, so low vision and blind people have a lot of trouble with big wide open spaces for directionality, for all kinds of things like that. So sometimes if you just have a change in a carpet color, we know where we're supposed to go, head for the different carpet color. Um, I don't know if Elise finds that too, but that's what I used to find. I used to judge a lot of things about where I needed to go based on the color of the floor. Um, um, and I don't know yeah. if you do that. Well, I do and I don't. Um, I sometimes have trouble with sudden changes in floor coloring because of I have no depth perception. And so I can't always tell uh -huh. whether I'm going down a level, stepping down from something. I can get fooled easily. But, okay, so we have competing needs there. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, which is me, pretty typical in accessibility. Yeah, but it's okay. I mean, because sometimes it depends. If it's like going from one room to the next, yes. Like, for instance, the reference room and the main room, if that's a different color, that I can, that, yes, I understand and I can deal with. It's just if, like, I'm in a big room and suddenly the floor changes color and then goes back to another color in a, in a wide open space, that's a problem. Okay. I don't know if I'm making um, sense. Yes, you do. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's opposite from what I would have needed. Do you have different texture flooring? I mean, that's not, we yeah. don't need to get into that now if you haven't done it because we could do that for a, sec, a subsequent meeting, but even in libraries or in big buildings, wayfinding is an issue for people with very low vision or no vision. Um, um, and so yeah. we can, I mean, I don't wanna get into that right now if you haven't done it yet. We don't. Because yeah. I wanna make sure oh. we can have you back and do it at a subsequent time. But I just mm -hmm. want you to know there are things about color scheme, contrast between floor and walls or Wall lack color. thereof. I'm sorry? Wall colors, yeah. I definitely yeah. am interested in the future of meeting yeah. about that. Because a lot of the time, if you can't see objects and you can't see um, particular things, you can see wall colors, you can see floor colors, 
Yes. And it's very helpful in orientation for where you are. It wouldn't help me anymore, but it used to be the way I lived. Yeah, that's the way I live. All right, so I'm going to jump now up to level okay. two. Um, and so here we have on level two, again, you know, the southern portion is the 1927 original building. Um, and generally everything kind of north of that is the, the new addition. Um, because of that, we are dealing with the existing heights of the 1927 building. And in our new addition, um, the floor ceilings are going to be higher. So at this location, we are proposing um, some level changes that um, trans as you transition into the, the newer portion. So if you think about the existing level two um, as a plane, as a zero level plane, there'll be a ramp to take you up 18 inches um, to the, the addition. And then um, there's another ramp um, just adjacent to that um, that will take you down to the administration area because it's part of the existing 1927 portion. So we're, so there'll be ramps to accommodate that flow of, of changes um, around. Um, and there won't be any uh, steps or you know, stairs um, to, mm -hmm. to allow free flow for anyone to maneuver through the entirety of level two. This is the current entry floor you're talking about. No, this is- um, Upstairs. Upstairs, yes, <laughs> on second floor. Okay, so garden level equals basement, level one equals current entry floor. Correct. Level two equals up the steps. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so we're currently, I'm showing the level two plan um, and in the center of the plan shows the, the ramps that are essentially, uh, there's two ramps, um, one going north and one going to, to, to the west, um, just north of the 1927 building. Okay. And then here we have a large area for stacks. And I wanted to call out uh, that all of our stacks that we are showing, the minimum we would have between stacks is three feet. And I have a separate call out, sorry, and another sheet here. This is a large blow up showing the stack configuration. So I'm here in this view showing the width between stacks would be three feet minimum, and that is throughout the project. So there will be no scenario where someone is between shelves and it's less than three feet. Oh. Um, can I ask you a question? Um, yes. I don't know, have you gotten to, I'll leave it alone if you haven't gotten there yet, but my question is about lighting. Have you guys talked about that yet? Or gotten there yet? No, we, okay. no, we haven't, but is there a um, I, I find that now the current overhead lighting very, especially it's fluorescent and it's very high up. It, it's tough. Um, I would like to see more direct, you know, bright or lower lighting toward the books. But that could be a separate discussion. Yeah, I think we're going to have to have you back when we're going to have yeah. to talk about interior design and lighting. Yeah, I don't want to get this into is it obviously, now. Okay. This is obviously a long discussion. And I guess okay. I will point out that three people on this committee applied to be on the building committee and none of them were accepted. Mm -hmm. So um, that is extremely unfortunate, but so we're going to have to have you back because I'm sure there's stuff you haven't thought about. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Thank so you. Um, uh, you can go on with the big, with the things you have determined already or right. that aren't quite, yeah. Uh, so still on level level two. Um, again, there are there are some single user restrooms um, here as well. Single room, lockable, uh, accessible, um, with the two foot ten max counter height um, that we're calling out. I call out here as well as the doors that I had mentioned. That typical throughout. Um, you'll have the proper clearances and. A, reach approach um, dimensions throughout. So that's 12 inches on the side of the door on a push side. 
and then a minimum of 18 inches on the, the pole side of the door that, so that if someone is in a wheelchair or needs to come up to the door, they have the room that they can approach, approach that door. If I could backtrack a little bit of and talk about the elevator. Yes. Is it going to beep to let people know what floor they're on or Good what is the question? Do? I, I would I would assume so. And this will be a new elevator. And so um, it, it I can't imagine it not, I think, to to, to for um, hearing um, impaired individuals, it would do that. No, it's for visually impaired individuals. Yes. Ah. And, and right, excuse me, yes. Sure. And they have a code for how high to put the buttons. I don't I'm not sure. Yes, the okay. they have to be in a proper reach range. I, I don't remember that dimension, but um, we are designing okay. to that standard. And well lit. Yes. Good. Okay. Now with this, I'm going to move up to the third level, which is the, the small level. It's the what's going to be on the second level. I'm uh, sorry. No, good question. So the second level, um, there's a large portion of stacks that will be in the new wing, as yep. well as um, computer stations for the public in the no yeah, far north. Talk about those. Okay. In the far north, there will be an area um, for young adults, um, and they have their own um, program room and function spaces. There will also be group study rooms that are open to um, the public as well as an area for the um, ESL, English Second Language um, Department, where they have tutor rooms and classrooms um, for, for that function. Um, in the original 1927 portion, there's a, on the Western side will be for administration. Um, on the main level, two of the existing 1927 building will be the adult reading room. Um, and then there'll be a couple offices for, for staff. Good. So moving up, oh yeah, please. No, I just said good. <laughs> so moving up to level. I, I have, yes. I just I'm seeing the stairwells. Uh, uh -huh. Like, and I'm just wondering, um, just for people to be safe, um, so that they're aware that there are stairs there. I don't know, um, exactly so what. Are you referring so, to so there are three types of main stairs. Two of them are in enclosed rooms, which are we refer to as the fire stairs, really for egress purposes. And then there will be um, another stair in the main portion of level two that is we call a communicating stair, and there'll be sight lines down to level one. Um, what is uh, there? Is that a a bar? What is that? So there will be a handrail. Um, we're still kind okay. of finalizing the design of that. So there, um, what you see is it, is the intention about where it's located, how it will actually be um, attached to the floor is, is still being coordinated. Um, but there will be a handrail um, and guardrail um, for any individual who's walking around this. OK. Are the st yeah. stairs are in the middle of the, I mean, the stairs are there walls are, around them or are they just open? How does that work? The central stair is open, but it's um, on the eastern portion of, of the space. Um, and so it won't be directly in a um, kind of the main path of travel from the ramp, um, but will be off to the side. Um, That's good. <laughs> yes. Um, What's happening to the existing stairs? They, so there is an, ex, so in the 1927 portion, there is, right when you walk in that front door, there's yes. a staircase there that is remaining. And that staircase okay. takes you all the way up to level, uh, level three. Um, okay. But any of the other stairs without the project are being um, demolished and the new stairs are going to be built to code. Okay. I was just wondering if the stairs are going to be <clears throat> like in the middle of an open space, all of a sudden here's the staircase, or if there are gonna be walls 
um, that will have anything to do with finding the stairs. So I, 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 I understand what you're saying. And I think that we need to take another look at maybe, and that's maybe where the role of flooring materials comes, comes to play and adjacent to the communicating stair on the Northern portion. In part, um, that's true, but there's more to it than that. Yes, yes. Um, um, so we do need to have you back um, because so we can figure out I was just wondering if the stairs are just all of a sudden they're there in the middle of an open space or are there walls adjacent at least on one side to the stairs? Or are they just completely open? Marty, do you know what I'm asking? I think I do. And it's hard to tell until we see what the elevations look like. I, I think if I read the plans right, they're sort of going to be surrounded by handrails, but I'm not sure. I think we need to see what the design looks like before yeah, I can. Yeah. It, they're not going to be like open stairs with no handrails and all of that. There will be handrails and guardrails yeah. on, on all sides. So a portion in the here in this case where my mouse is on the northern portion yeah. you from here you go down mm -hmm. this direction and so that's the only part that's open is to access the stairs but there will be guardrails and handrails yeah there'll be guardrails along the side that's re okay. actually required by code so that's so the, yeah so there there's a guardrail is the part where your feet go open or is there a little It'll be closed because you got to be able to to have a cane hit the side of it. Correct. Yeah. No, it's it'll be closed. We'll see. again once we see the elevations, we'll begin to see. Okay. You know how right. that's okay. taken care okay. of because there's several ways to do it. Okay. Um, just for full disclosure, um, to the architects who are there, I'm actually an architect. So. Great. It's good to have 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 your your input. Yeah. So let me move up to level three now, and level three is only taking up the um, third floor of the 1927 portion, so it's a lot smaller in, in scale. The new elevator will rise um, from the new portion and connect with the bridge into the original space, so you still have access to this space. The main part of level three is taken up here on the western side by the um, Goodwin room. I think it's also referred to as the trustees room. Um, so that will be accessible um, to, to, for everyone. And then the other portion is taken up by the staff break room. The staff break room will have all accessible height um, counter and sink there, as well as the accessible restroom. There is one public single user restroom as well accessible from, from the public facing side here. So it seems like the, the main restroom in the building for more than one person is in the basement. Is that correct? At the garden level? Correct. That's the only one that has more than one stall. Correct. So, All other restrooms will be single user rooms. And how many will there be on each floor? So we have um, public restrooms or uh, in total? Public. So on level three is one. Okay. On level two, we have two. On level one, we have three. And then in the garden level, in addition to that eight user um, restroom, there's a, a one single user uh, room. Okay. Maya, I, Myra, I think it makes yep. sense. Um, especially because the lower level has the um, oh, the public conference meeting room. room. Yeah, the meeting room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. yeah, I understand that. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm thinking as a former high school employee um, <laughs> that that uh, the downstairs garden room restroom that's going to be available uh, for all people um, needs. I'm sure it needs some staff nearby or something but that's not for the architect that's that's programmatic and that's a different discussion <laughs> but i worked at the high school for 20 years <laughs> okay 
right. so that is um, kind of I've kind of called out all the big elements and so I'm um, love to hear other comments or questions that, that you have so the special oh, collections I'm, is going to be where and is it going uh, to be accessible to people or yes. is it still by appointment and you you know you have to ask for everything and how is that going to work that's also a programmatic question i just want to know where it's going to be yeah special collections will be housed on the garden level so i'm showing that here in the northern oh. portion of the new edition there'll be the special collections reading room and adjacent to that will be a special collections work room um, in the 1927 portion on the same level, um, there'll be the Civil War tablet exhibit room, there's be a separate special collections exhibit room, and then there's the um, protected special collections storage as well, and it's all on the garden level. Okay, so that's going to be extremely public, extremely welcoming. You don't have to really get into the whole library in order to see what the library has to offer. That's great, actually. Okay. I have a question. Um, is Elise here? Um, can you once again describe to me the main how to get into the library itself, the entrance? Yes. Yeah, so the the main entrance to the library is going to be the the main the same entrance that's there today. Um, it is uh, on the south portion of the 1927 building, um, facing Amity Street. Is that with the steps and everything? Yes, and um, Rachel That's not will talk about it all. Um, Rachel will discuss that um, okay. in, in a couple minutes um, on the, about mm. the exterior portion. Okay. okay. In the interest of time, I have to say yeah. that we have about ten minutes before we have another okay. guest, so we're going to have to put you back on May. Um, all right, because. This is, I mean, we probably could give you the whole meeting in May and it wouldn't be enough. So um, can, can any, is anything going to be determined uh, about the exterior portion, uh, about the landscape design, about the ramp design, about the entrance design that can't be changed before May? I don't believe so. I'll, I'll, maybe this is a good time for Rachel to I can pass it off to Rachel to, to speak and, and present. Rachel, do you want to give just an interest of time, um, just give a general overview of how folks get well, in the we library? Have like, we have like three minutes. So okay. I think that the general overview is going to take longer than that. I Got guess it. for for so for this for this particular portion of the meeting, I guess I would stick to the inside unless there's anything that's going to be determined now that has to do with the outside that cannot be reviewed equally well in May. Nothing. We can change. We can make changes in May. Okay. Cool. All right. So back no. to Elise's question about where the other entrances are. You talked about the 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 main one already. There have to be other ones. So where are they? Yes. So there will only be. Um, two public entrances. So that first one I mentioned, um, which is the existing building, um, the existing entrance off Amity, there will be another on the garden level because the, the slope of the terrain um, yep. slopes downward as you go north. Um, there'll be a new entrance um, facing north on the garden level that will allow for after hours functions for the meeting room and the large meeting room. And so the rest of the library can still be closed and this area can still function independently. All right, I'm just, I'm asking because the main one is really inaccessible. So I just wanted to know if there are gonna be changes or whether there were other ones, thanks. Yeah, well, I, I'd be, uh, this is Saren. I'd be very interested to learn more about the entrance on the Amity Street level. I yes. can't visualize it. I know right now there are two, the main one being with the stairs, which is unusable for people with mobility impairments. And then there is the one with the long ramp that goes to the side of the building. Right. So, you know, I'd like to really visualize it very nicely to see how this okay. is going to be addressed. Right. So that's going to be topic number one for May, um, which okay. is the exterior entrances and the, and the, um, I guess the traffic flow uh, around the doorways. Yes. And, maybe, and, and yeah. Can we um, also add a parking spaces 
accessing yep. from yep. you know our okay that's great yep so great. i guess um i think it's even going to take longer than just may this is why <laughs> people from this committee wanted to be on the building committee um um so at the moment what we what we know is about accessible restrooms accessible height changes within the building elevator or ramps um what we know um what we have brought to your attention is color um which we can talk about further um what is there anything that you need to know from us right now that has to do where are you with these drawings are you where where are you in what in what phase are you in, still in design phase are you in getting close to construction documents where are we're, you we're in design development um and design okay. development drawings are due uh we'll be submitting um early like the first couple of days of may um and then we'll be going That's into interior construction. design interior design is that what you're saying uh, uh, design thing. documentation and so it, we're we're flushing out um design of the interior as well as the exterior simultaneously um then in may we'll be going into construction documentation oh so you're pretty far along here uh okay i know we're gonna have to have you for our unless are there people in this group who feel like we should have an extra meeting before they get close to construction documents because I feel like we haven't heard enough. I don't know what, what the rest of the committee feels. I and, wouldn't I, mind. and just I wanted to say one thing. So for the for a month, we will be doing an estimate and um, reconcile our, our estimates. So most of the month of May, we will have time to meet with you. Whatever works. Okay. But we do have that that time. That month. Okay. Our meeting would be May 9. Okay. Um, which that would be our regularly scheduled meeting. And I think we have to give over almost our entire meeting time to it. Um, mm -hmm. So we At can least. make sure, yeah. Um, and does anyone in the committee feel a, des a desire or a need to meet again before May? I'm, I'm not saying whether I do or not, but um, they're pretty far along. Mm -hmm. If we had a choice, we'd rather wait till May 9th. And then if we need to meet with you again in May, we can okay. meet, you know, a few weeks after. Okay, so we can add in May. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay that's that fine. works for you. Yeah. Can I just that's make fine. one statement? Please do. Um, a couple of months ago, I actually reviewed the exterior and I don't see any problems. And I think it, it looks really fabulous. Cool. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> Yay. And that's Marty, the architect, who just said yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so, no, that's great. Myra, um, Myra, I want to say on behalf of everybody involved in the Jones project, uh, how grateful we are. We've already, we're already seeing the fruits of these conversations. We really appreciate the care um, that you um, have shown. And we're really grateful whenever we hear someone in Amherst say about this project that it is really great. So Marty, thank you for sending us <laughs> off with wind in our sails. <laughs> I will continue to say it because we really need this work to be done. It's exciting. Yeah, it's, yeah it'll no, be it, a it's great, great place. And part of the May discussion, I believe, also has to do um, with the computer banks um, and I guess part of the cost I assume will have to do with any assistive technology that's required so that there can be complete public access to the computer banks. And um, so we can talk about that, but I hope that, um, I don't know who's the person who's gonna be thinking about that primarily, if that's Sharon or if that's if you have a particular consultant about that, but um, that would be something that we need to hear about right. and including um, what Elise brought up, which is uh, lighting in workspaces um, that people with uh, low vision would require that might be different from what other people might find to be adequate. So, um, I mean, I think that that's part of what we have to discuss in May. 
Yes. Okay. We will look forward to seeing you in May. Okay. Thank cool. you. Thank Great. you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. This is great. Before everyone leaves, oh, has Sharon left already? Okay. I'll ask her. I was going to reach out. You, would you like the entire group to return in May? Maybe in a way, yeah. Okay. Um, but I mean, um, Marty says that the exterior is great. So um, we're probably not going to spend as much time with Ellen. Um, but I think that there are a lot of interior um, library use. Um, I mean, he is very, he was stuck on counter heights and, and bathrooms, um, but accessibility has a lot more to it than that. Um, so um, yeah, I think possibly the whole group could be useful. So because as many of them hear what we have to say as possible, Okay. I think that would be by then they useful. should have some details on that stair. All right. So okay. we should be able to understand how that because that's going to be a mass in the center of the space. Right. And I know right. that's one of your concerns and I don't finding it. Yeah. Okay. Finding so it and also not not hitting it right. and also not going through, it. through it. I agree with my <laughs> So um, may I make a suggestion that uh, yeah. for the next meeting, we might start with the ex uh, exterior space, which will probably take less time. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and, and I will just email everyone that was a part of this meeting that that, uh, that will be the plan that we'll start with the exterior, exterior spaces. Yes. Actually, Pamela, could we get the slides and a preview? before that would be good. I'd like to do that so I can really, you know, look at it. I I can ask later. for this. That would yeah. be great. Do you know, Marty, at what point do they build those right. little models? Um, I don't know whether they're building a model. I don't think they are. Um okay. models are rarely done now uh -huh. because okay. of the Revit and the the 3D modeling they can do. Um they can do all sorts of, you can uh, do walkthroughs. I mean, it doesn't help someone who's blind, unfortunately. Correct, uh, but those little models do. <laughs> yeah, the little models really do, but those they were great. models are expensive. <laughs> so, those little models were great. <laughs> yeah, but they're Let's really expensive. Let's go back expensive. to the ancient past. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, so, so this is Jeff good. is here, so um, we can ask, invite him to uh, share his video, and he's here to join to join Fabulous. us. Fabulous. So, joining us is Jeff Dugan from Massachusetts Office on Disability, and we talked. I, I've been. I wrote to him a few months ago um, because there had been a lot of suggestion in this group that we should really be a commission not a committee, um, that there might be some revenues that we could come by somehow, although I don't know that we can do that. Um, and also just what other commissions and other towns are doing. So um, if you, Jeff, thank you so much for giving us your time and for oh, giving you. us your expertise and take it away. All right, um, so good, uh, it's not morning, it's not evening, it's afternoon, right? So good afternoon. Right. <laughs> uh, I know the temperatures, at least in situate where I live, is getting up to about 70. I don't know if it's cooking you guys out in Amherst yep. yet, but yep. um, But thank you for having me. Thank you for, um, and you know, that was a very interesting discussion talking about that that project that's happening. Um, you know, it's some pretty, pretty good knowledge that you guys are feeding back to them. So that's really, really good. Um, I was excited to see that while I was sitting in the background. Um, so I have a lot to kind of go over here today, Myra, and, and for the commission members. And so first, let me start with, I'm Jeff Dugan. I've been with MOD, our Mass Office on Disability, for about 20, I think I'm working on my 23rd year right now. Uh, I recognize a couple. I know, Sarah, and I recognize you from other yeah. training you may have, that you may have attended and done. I'm sure there are others here. I thought like, Pat might be someone else I've interacted with in the past. And Myra, I know we've, we've chatted back and forth as well. Yeah. So if, I, if I've met you before, I'm sorry if I'm not acknowledging it right now, but uh, it's very good to see you. I know I'm not in person, but we'll do this virtually. Um, and the, the idea is here that this is not meant to be a one-time meeting. This is meant to be you know, a growing relationship. So everything that we do at MOD, 
uh, and everything that I'm doing is, is part of it is always tailored to uh, interacting and working with commissions and trying to help them with difficulties, with success, you know, not help them with successes, but help them any way we can with technical assistance. And that is coming through, uh, we're going to be doing a, well, right now the, the, our website has been, keeps getting updated. So it is something you should check out for information, but we are building, we're going to be building a, a specific page for commissions on disabilities. So there'll be a specific page for, for towns that don't have a commission or a committee. Then we want a page for active commissions. So we can try to link up you with other commissions throughout the Commonwealth. So there becomes a kind of a dialogue between the two or, or just a discussion between the two. Uh, uh, and then uh, the third one will be something about meetings related to commissions. So, um, so with that, um, and we're going to be updating that. So I wouldn't expect necessarily until, you know, the, after July, probably. I think that's the plan is to, to get our website going up there to, to update. Because right now it's, hey, start a commission or, or attend a regional meeting. Uh, so it's really not much there for, hey, how can we network as a commission with other commissions or, or other entities as well? So uh, there's a lot of updates coming there. Um, and, I, and, and Myra, I want to make sure I keep on task with you. I know one of the questions is about CODs versus, versus committees, like com yes. commissions versus com committees. Yeah. Um, I have loads of resources I also want to share with you. Uh, if we have time, we'll go over some of those as well uh, that I'll share uh, and then email to everyone. Uh, Myra will probably email it to you or Pam will email it to you and we can just distribute it out to the rest of the membership, uh, commission members. Because there is, I have a document with about, I wanna say 40 or so listed resources. Uh, and if I can, and I think you've let me share my screen. So let me sh start sharing my screen by um, share this page. So you, you might see everybody there. But what, I, what I'm bringing up on my website is, or on the <laughs> on my screen, and let me know if people need it zoomed in or which, which not, but it's our MOD landing page. So right now, I just, because I want to spend a few minutes on this because it's rapidly up. Could you make it a little curious. bigger? Oh, sure thing. Is that better? Yes. Okay. So, you know, we have a couple of tiles up. We have, excuse me, uh, we have five tiles that are up on the screen when we first launch. The big one is going to be disability rights, access, and resources, that particular tab. But if you want to know what MOD does, you can look uh, at the top one. What is MOD? We have a work experience program that we're running more for state agencies, but it's something to look at where we bring in uh, 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 voc rehab uh, individuals to shadow people and, and apply and look at the jobs that they might be applying for within the commonwealth so we're running that type of program there's a lot of voc rehab and independent living training that we're doing now as well uh and then we have a lot of trainings i'm going to get to all of these not all of these but some of these in a minute because there's some great resources here for the commissions on disabilities so with our web website we have a our, we have a publications page we have our ADA improvement grant program. And can I ask, at least to, to Myra, are, are you aware of the municipal ADA improvement grant program that MOD offers to municipalities? Um, if those are the ones that the town actually applies for, Pamela, is that what, or is he talking about something that's different? So I, I'm not sure that um, I'm aware of it. So this, if okay. you have a moment to yeah. uh, to talk yeah, about there that, there always were grants they applied for. Pamela is a new liaison for us, um, oh, only okay. a yep. couple months. So the the prior uh, person has left town employment. So um, okay. this was good. This would be good for all of us. Okay, and 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 on the and if I can open my Word document, um, I'm just going to minimize my screen for just a minute. Um, I'm going to move you guys over there. If you see me staring off in a different direction, I apologize. I'm just looking. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Things have happened here. Let me just, <laughs> I, I did something wrong. So let me uh, figure out what I did. Can I move this? Can we? Okay. I literally lost you guys, but we'll, we'll come back. Uh, okay. So let me open up my Word doc. So what you'll be getting receiving from me tomorrow, uh, you'll be receiving. Um, You'll be receiving a, a, a document from me with all of these links to the documents that some of the documents I'll be talking about up above, uh, and there'll be additional documents on there. Like if you're looking for regulations, I have some of the regulation links. If you're looking for uh, the ADA Improvement Grant Program, I have the link to that. There's some MOD fact sheets that we've put together, like outdoor dining, parking fact sheet, the COVID-19 uh, memo to ADA coordinators and chairs. Well, it's a little bit outdated. It's still 
could be relevant if it, if it spurs up again. And then guidance, uh, some accessibility guidance for virtual trainings. Uh, our website has definitely been updated with a lot of um, helpful pages dealing with employment, housing, finding your way around organizations that serve disability communities, as well as the best practice for holding web-based meetings. So there's a lot of great resources that are being updated on our website that I just want to make sure you got that uh, the commission uh, that, that Amherst is aware of um, so we can um, see that. I do really need to find you guys, though. I'm so sorry. Give me half a second while I figure out where you went. <laughs> it's really, I know, I can't believe it's um, it, like it's missing. Um, I view you. Uh, let me let me do this. Let me stop share and see if you, okay, good. I'm back. Whew. Now let me share my screen again. Uh, what I'm first going to show you is the Word document. And again, I know it's super uh, super small, probably. Uh, let me do one page and I'm going to zoom in. So we've got a lot of materials here that we're going to share with you, including you know website accessibility, what the state uses. There's a service contract now that the state. Uh, that municipalities can go to if they need to uh, create documents accessibly or need certain things for communication or document production. Uh, so there's a statewide IT contract out there that I'd like to share. Uh, obviously, in which we're going to spend some time on is the establishing a commission or, or talking about that. We also, and I'm going to open these because I just want to provide them as guidance for, for you as well. Um, the the I want to provide the two Mass General Laws that talk about commissions on disabilities specifically. One being Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 8J, while the other one is uh, Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 22G. That allows, and again, I'm just going to open them up. I'll talk about 8J first. Um, 8J is really, uh, so this formalizes a committee or a body uh, in, uh, in the community uh, to to, to establish a disability commission or a commission on disabilities as we typically will call them. Not every community that we know of that has commissions are, are, are fully established HJ commissions. Uh, we do have some that are uh, more committees, but you know, formalized in a little bit of a different way than, than is, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having a, a tough, my screen is like all over the place. We'll take a deep breath, right? And we're gonna come back. So what I wanna show you is actually the screens because this is where I'm gonna stick around for now. So section 8J should be up on your screen now. And it talks about that. Section 8J lays out how members are appointed, what type of membership you have. Uh, and that's pretty, pretty specific, as well as it gives in the law itself, six different kind of activities or, or works that commissions on disabilities are typically doing. And, you know, Amherst is a, is a very large community as well. So, you know, switching to a commission does come with a little bit of, of a membership requirement, which you, which again, you might be, um, I don't know what the membership is right now on your commission, but if you're following HA, it's, it's basically a majority of individuals need to be people with disabilities. Uh, one can be a, a parent or an immediately fam immediate family member of an individual with a disability. Uh, one, uh, should be a, a municipal uh, appointed official. Um, and then the rest can be made up of, of whichever. And so depending on the number of seats, you're gonna have to ensure the majority are people with disabilities. Again, in large communities where you don't have, or smaller communities where you don't have a wonderful volunteer list that is uh, lining up, um, it is something that uh, we have some strategies for that. But, but for Amherst, can I ask Myra, um, how many members Cur do you currently, currently have? Currently we have, <clears throat> Currently we're down two, we have five, we just had interviews. We will have seven whenever they get appointed, which hopefully will be by May or June. And um, I think the majority of them are people with disabilities. Okay, yeah, and again, um, so it's just when, if you were to make the adoption of HA uh, official within Amherst, um, then we'd have to kind of look at that particular membership. Like for example, I know Pitts, Pittsfield, um, they have a very, they have a committee uh, but they do things very similarly to the Commission on Disabilities, with the exception of they have uh, a lot of town departments that report to them during their meetings. So they're set up a little bit differently than, than a commission would be, just because I think of the nature of the community. So every community is a little bit different. And if, you, if you want to pursue adopting HA, it's, it's pretty easy, depending on your, the form of government. Uh, and then, uh, and, and, it, and again, we're going to go over kind of these items, like how, how membership's made up, uh, what some of the options are, 
But I also wanted to share with you just because they are kind of linked that if you are a Section 8J commission, you are able to enact Section 22G, which allows some or all of the uh, accessible parking fines uh, violations that people get uh, to be given back to the local commission on disabilities. Um, and that's a pretty big thing. And a lot of com you know, communities that do this uh, are being pretty creative with it. Um, and we can talk about that when we get to, um, uh, or, or just, again, I'm having trouble seeing people. So what I'm going to do is if people have a question, by all means, raise your hand uh, and I will, or, well, or just, just yell out. People will just yell out. That's okay, sort of the perfect. way we do stuff. Yep. No, that's perfect. So, uh, so again, if you were looking to, um, this, this is because, I, uh, all right. I'm having, this, no. Okay. Uh, so with that, uh, so AJ and 22G, they're linked. Uh, I will talk about successes that commissions have had with using the 22, uh, the 22G funds, if that's something you want to pursue. But the HA must be adopted at, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is Amherst a, um, a city or we have, a... We have a town council. Town we council, not, okay. I don't think we're technically a city, are we, Pat? Yes, we are, actually. We, we are, are a city we known as the town of Amherst. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay. So is there like a town council, like a city council, yes. town council? Yes, kind there of thing? is. Pat is okay. on this town council. Oh, okay, okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So, I'm so to be quiet unless they ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> no, the uh, so section eight J would would have to be adopted at a at one of the town council meetings uh, through through their regular agenda to adopt. Uh, you know, towns usually have to go to town meeting and get this particular section adopted. Uh, city council is a little bit easier for cities. In uh, or larger communities where they have that type of form of government because it can just be uh, it can be adopted at the uh, what would be the reasons that they wouldn't do it um you know that's a great question i i don't have a good answer to that other than um i, I don't have a great answer to that. uh i don't know why they wouldn't go with a commission over a committee uh committees you know the the real general sense of a committee is your the committee is there to solve a solve an issue and then move on the reality of it is the disability issues never really close themselves, right? They're always going to be something that needs to be uh, looked at. And so turning yourself from a committee, which is, was, you know, and you guys have been around for a while, I think. Um, or the, the, uh, Amherst More than committee. 30 years. Yeah, right, right. So, yeah. so what was appropriate back 30 years ago? You know, in all honesty, you might not have had HJ to actually look to. <laughs> you might have had, you know, this was back in the 80, late 80s, I think, or early 80s. So you're saying name. it's pretty much a name thing. Well, well, but it also HA is is a name naming convention kind of thing. But it also really does set the rules out uh, to say, you know, this is the membership. This is how people get appointed. This is how people get removed if they need to, uh, and 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 things like that. The the guidance is going to always be the same. So I'm not sure if people can can see it, but when I highlight the the kind of six goals that are laid out in the general law. That's the same between you know committees and commissions. It's just sometimes the membership makeup or the choice of how many members you want to have uh, would make sense. But back when you guys were formed, you know, AJ, it might have made sense for them just to make up uh, to get a committee going because that might have been easier than having to go through okay. city um, town meetings or whichever. Uh, it does okay. and would make sense now to consider switching to AJ to to bring yourselves to be the actual commission. Because with the interest the of time, adoption, oops, sorry. Can you tell us about what people do um, when they do use the parking fines? It's not sure. a lot of money. So, what do people yep. do with them um, that you have that you said were creative? I'm really no, definitely, definitely. Oh. So, so I'll show, I'll share some examples from what our commission does in Situate, um, and and I've been a member there for a good long time since I've been with MOD pretty much uh, for about 20 years now. Um, but um, so we get fines periodically, right? We don't have, you know, it's up to the police to actually enforce. So we've done some education to enforce the police to know that they can, you know, ticket on certain properties and, and look for these. Uh, we've actually used some of our funds to, uh, in a limited fashion, hire police details to actually go out and monitor the accessible parking throughout town, especially for like large events for us like the heritage days in the middle of the summer or like July 4th weekend, uh, we'll send out, you know, we'll, we'll hire a couple of police details to go out and monitor that, uh, which, which helps with, um, 
you know, ensuring that the spaces that are that are limitedly provided in Situate uh, is, is something that's available for people who need them. Uh, it also gives them a chance to kind of double check with the enforcement of the police and stuff, to double check to make sure the placards are accurate, that they're not, you know, altered or changed or not expired, um, because there's a lot of issues with placard abuse in Massachusetts right now. So we kind of see it as a double-edged sword, right? It's going to open up parking for people who truly need it. Uh, and it will also allow the, the um, some looking at to ensure that the placards are actually valid and uh, you're not using somebody else's depending on what they run into. But the use of the funds that we collect as a general pool, we typically, when we get to like a $3,000 mark, which isn't a whole lot, um, we then kind of decide on what we want to spend it on. Uh, at times we've purchased beach wheelchairs uh, for the, for the, uh, for the beaches. Uh, in fact, I think now we have up to three or two, 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 I think that we purchased over time. Uh, we, we purchase things for the library of things like such as, uh, adaptive equipment, uh, or specialized equipment for people who are, who are blind, who might need additional, uh, assistance there for like with, with, uh, some software or programs at the library. We also have, um, have, uh, donated like a lot of Apple related, like iPads and things like that, because those are very accessible if settings are tuned correctly. Uh, we've used it to uh, build curb cuts. We've used it to build ramps on the, onto uh, a gazebo, um, which was an Eagle Scout project. Um, so th there's a lot of, you know, if you can think about it, uh, it's probably going to be usable. The, the, the key thing with, with chapter 40, section 22 G, the funds is that it has to be used um, let me get the right proper words here. Let me scroll out to so just find it. Um, should we, uh, yeah, the commission gets to recommend that, but it's to, the funds have to be used solely for the benefit of persons with disabilities. So the reason for that, uh, is that this is pub this is technically public funds being given to the commission. So there's anti-aid use amendments and things like that, that we have to be careful that it doesn't go to a singular individual and it doesn't go to a singular business, uh, unless it's for the public good. So that's something that you'd have to talk with your, your, uh, your, your, your town, your, your, your city people about with, or Amherst persons uh, about to see, to ensure that, but pretty much if it's any sort of municipal project or uh, related to a municipal program, uh, then those funds can easily be used for that. Purpose. Do the funds go into an account where they can go across fiscal years, or do they? Uh, yeah. Do they oh, run? yeah. No, that's great. Uh, Section twenty-two G is a special account that is set up, and it rolls from year to year, and it accrues okay. interest as well. So okay. it's not like your budget, if you have a budget, uh, that will revert at the end of the fiscal year. This particular fund rolls and grows. That's why okay. we situate when we get to like the three to four thousand mark, we start looking at okay, is there something we want to do, or are we going to okay. save up more for a bigger item? Because uh, we've purchased multiple wheelchairs for the library. We have a transport wheelchair that we purchased. We have a, a walker that somebody can use. That type of stuff. So you know, and we've also funded like programs. We we brought uh, I think. It, a sailing program for persons with disabilities to our new marina uh, that, that the town built. So we also donated money to that marina to be used for the ramp that they built. Uh, so it's, you know, there's a lot of great resources that in, in, in uses of these funds that not only one builds the relationship with you as a commission with the other department heads, because you might be funding a curb cut that, you know, DPW may not have the funds for, uh, or, or fixing something in town that, you know, otherwise will never be fixed, but you know, you, you guys have realized that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's something that needs to be fixed and should be fixed. Um, oh, oh even though, what, what was it? What was oh, that? Boy. Oh yep. boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So like, that's what we do with our gazebo and Eagle Scout had approached us and, you know, the, in all honesty, the town, you know, that was a kind of thing that the town never really looked at or really considered that they needed to do stuff to. Uh, but we had an Eagle Scout build a ramp onto that. And, and now when we have our summer night uh, music, I think music times at like Fridays uh, and Saturdays, uh, we have bands that go up on the bandstand now that can play. Uh, we have people that, and it's a small little gazebo, but the bands go up there, students go up there, and people hang out up there now, and it's very inclusive. So it's right on the water, and it's pretty fun. So if you have whatever you want to use it for, as long as it is benefiting people with disabilities in the community, then that is something uh, you can pursue. Okay. If you get into, you know, when you get to this point, or get to, uh, if you have questions about the use of funds, by all means, uh, we can offer uh, our, our guidance on that as well. Um, or if somebody's asking you uh, when you are approaching to do this, um, if you approach to do this, uh, what what you can use the funds for, I can give you know we can create that list together 
uh, that you think will be beneficial from the Amherst side of things. Um, okay. So, if, but Does the first step any is questions direct. The first step is what? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, no. The first step is to become to, the HJ is right. to check this and double check with the city clerk or town clerk to make sure this hasn't already been adopted. I, for some reason, I'm thinking that it might have been, but again, I could be wrong. So, um, okay. In fact, if I can actually get to my, let me pause my share for a minute. Uh, I'm gonna just minimize my screen, <laughs> and for some reason, this is blocking half my screen. This is so annoying. Let me stop the share because I do need to see my whole screen. Um, and how do I make this less big? Um, let me double click. Perfect. Okay. Good. I think I'm back to, to being set up. Uh, what I just promised to give <laughs> I'm so sorry. What I just promised to give you guys. Uh, I was looking forward. To, uh, yeah, I want to look for the COD, um, see what I have in my files. Um, to see if what I have is on record of uh, what you what you might be serving at. Uh, as a HA or, or not an HA commission? Well, we can always check with the town clerk. That's oh, yeah. Easy to yeah, do. no, I, I literally have my updated list here. I just wanted to see uh, Amherst. Let's see. Amherst. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, we have a we have you as committee only. Okay. Sorry. I just want to, I always like to just triple check to make sure I didn't miss something there. Um, but yeah, as a committee. So you'd first have to really look at adopting uh, the HA portion. And that can be done, I think, at city council. And then 22G can either be done at the same time, or it can be something that uh, you go back to the city, uh, to the council afterwards and just have them, again, enact it during a regular, regularly scheduled agenda meeting. Um, and the benefits really, it not only builds relationships from the commission to the other departments in town, uh, but it also, you know, lets you, you know, gives, it makes your presence in the community a little bit felt as well because you can you know that's success you can use and say hey we use the funds to do this this and this this year and you know and it's, it's just a great uh way of 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 advertising yourself as a commission and also while also providing some needed funds to do some of the work that otherwise might not be done right away so and it's not a whole lot although you might want to talk to the police to see what they write in an average month because you know that uh and I'm, oh yeah i'm seeing pat kind of shaking her head a little bit that it may not be a whole lot but this is where the education can come in. Maybe it's something MOD can help you train the police or have a conversation with the police to say, hey, you know, these are important things to monitor because, you know, right now we're looking at five to 7% of the spaces out there are gonna be accessible for people. Uh, and there's a lot more inaccessible spaces than there are accessible spaces. So keeping them open and usable for people that have the proper credentials who need them, uh, that's a big, that's a big, um, a big benefit for the city. It's one of the big sellers. Yeah, Pat, Does anybody here. have any questions at the moment for oh. Jeff? So um, Pat has her hand up and okay, I great. just want to alert you that we do have one attendee and so we need to um, call for public comment before oh, you okay. are, before well, you adjourn. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Myra, is it all right if yeah. I ask? Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to um, are there other ways of funding the commission besides um, parking tickets? That are, because the the amount is very small. I don't have an exact figure. Um, okay. So so uh, there is a budget that you could. I mean that not all commissions get a budget, but I know in situate we get about a five thousand dollar budget uh, every year to use for trainings, and we do a public awareness day and stuff. Uh, so we use some of that funds and. Um, so we yes yeah, so we have some of that we at times the town will give us a, a, an allowance to use some of those funds to maybe expend for other things that we might have used the, our parking fines for but again that's very limited uh so commissions really get money from three ways one they get it from a budget from the city or town and that's something you'd have to work out with the city or town uh for that um we got it because there was Originally, when we started getting adaptive vans or like for our COAs, the Council on Agings, uh, we were linked to the South Shore Elder Services who funded that that van. And it required that the commission have certain money set aside so we could pay for the maintenance of that van. So the commission could stay involved with it. Over time, that's kind of gone away. We now have GATRA. We have the COA has their own programming and stuff like that where they handle it. Uh, we're not giving them money, but we still receive that $5,000 budget every year to, to use. Uh, and they're pretty flexible with it. So the budget is one. The 
22G collection of the parking fines would work. And those are the one to $300 fines. So they're not going to be like the abuse fines, abuse of the placards or, um, you know, the, the things that are more, uh, I want to say criminal in offense. It's more just a civil of, uh, I parked here without the pla plate or placard or I, uh, and, and, and didn't have the proper credentials. So that's like 100 to 300, depending on what the town offers. Uh, and then the third option is uh, gifts. Uh, you can receive gifts of money and I think land, but I don't know if you're gonna go into that. Uh, but we, uh, <laughs> as our commission, uh, we've received about two gifts uh, in the value of I think $60 in one and $85 from the other uh, that were from people who passed and left us a little bit of a, a gift to give back to and they had specific conditions on it. So we gave one back to the, uh, the uh, and I don't like doing the special saying that word, the special education department. Um, we also gave um, uh, one of them back to the library, which was part of the, the request. So those are really the three avenues. The, the funnest one for the commission is the 22G uh, because that allows you to kind of use that at your discretion of, as long as it's a legal use of funds. Um, and uh, it, it just, it really is a, 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 not only a team building, but it's also a, you know, it allows you to kind of get some, uh, it, and again, I don't know your exposure to other town departments or not. It seems like they probably already know uh, you are there, uh, but it, it helps build kind of some good bridges between the departments as well, if you're going to use it for certain things like that, or uh, it just really will build some, uh, some relationships maybe with the city council as well, because they can see that you're using that money for, for good projects that benefit people and uh, with disabilities in the community. So those are really the three types of funding that I'm aware of for commissions. Okay. Um, and we can get to, if you're really thinking about doing 22G, uh, we can definitely have a, a further discussion about some of that, which would be, you know, talking with the police to see if they understand that, you know, what are the rules of parking in Amherst really? You know, do you have on-street parking that that's assigned? Do you have parking lots that, that have the accessible spaces provided, at least with signage? Um, you know, the, the, and um, and what are the police? What's their what's their rights? Are they allowed to go onto private property without first being called? Uh, and that's pretty big because that means they necessarily can't go onto private property with without being called. So if you're patrolling accessible parking and they don't have access to the private the the, the parking lot, they may not be able to enforce that parking lot right away. Okay. Good to know. Uh, just because it's some there. So it's some pre-thinking and then looking at historically, you know, how many tickets are written. And if we helped fund some of these, you know, what kind of, you know, having that discussion with the police, the chief or, or, or their designee that you'd want to have. And that's a, that's a bigger discussion, but we can definitely. Yeah, yeah no, it sounds to. like just in the interest of time, it sounds yep. to me like this is a good beginning. Um, it's certainly, as you said, the beginning of a dialogue, not the end point, not a one time. So. Um, if there aren't any immediate questions for Jeff right now, we're going to have three new members starting in, I don't oh, nice. even know when, but uh, before July, or by July anyway. Um, and so that at that point, when we have, uh, you know, a new makeup of the committee, um, yes. we might come back to you and ask for you to help us, you know, get to the next step. Oh, definitely. Um, and we'll talk to Pat and we'll talk to the town council and we'll see if we can get anywhere. But this has been a good beginning. Um, and uh, I didn't hear any other questions or I'm not aware of any more. And I know we have a person in the audience who okay. might be here for public comments. So we might need to have you um, suspend until we call you to come again. Definitely. So, so here's what I want to here's what I want to offer, Myra. What I will share okay. with you tomorrow uh, or later today, I'll share with you the document that I was talking about. It'll be in an email form. So I'll share that with you okay. with all the hyperlinks. So you okay. have that. What I would expect, because I haven't gone through really any of those documents with with, okay. with the commission here. Uh, at some point in the future, I should come back when you have the full membership and really go over the documents that I give you in that list to help okay. you uh, help understand That's certain great. things and re -guide. But it'd be helpful with new members. That's great. So, and you're doing okay. a training, right? In May, May third. Uh, yes, we're something. working with Stavros uh, to, okay. uh, to hold a so virtual. I signed up for that. I don't know okay. if everyone else is aware of it, but if you want to sign up for it, perhaps you can send us information about how to do that in case somebody missed. Unfortunately, the original. unfortunately, right now it's that full? class is full. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, right. and, and I know okay. it's virtual and why do we have it full, but um, because I was doing it at 40 people max and then we opened it up to 60 to see if more people wanted to take it. And, uh, and that filled up like within a day and a half. Okay. Almost two weeks. So okay. uh, All right. the interest Thank is there. So, so we much. have one coming up in November as well, but okay. it's a whole different plan for next year as well, how we're going to do it. So I'll stop. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for giving us your time. Thanks for your flexibility. Yeah, thank you. And I'm yeah, sure we'll you. be back to you. Thank you so All right. much. All right. Thank you, Myra. And it's good seeing everybody right. again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, Pamela, who is in the waiting room? So we'll just ask if um, if there's uh, anyone who'd like to have public comment, if you would just raise your hand and I can prom um, uh, promote you and allow you to speak. All right, so we do have a um, public a person. So if you'll identify yourself, I am uh, promoting you to panelists and, and you will be able to speak. Hi, sorry, that came in as a weird address. Um, this is just Tracy Zafian. I had just listened in on the meeting. I was interested in getting a copy of Jeff's slides. I mean, his okay. um, handout, that's it. Okay. And sorry, I it came up with like a work ID, so. Yeah, yeah, UFT or something. Yeah, yeah. UMTC, yeah. but yeah. okay, thank yeah. you, that's it. All right, I'll oh, make okay. sure I email them thank to you. you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, great, thanks. For thank you. Okay, so our May, com our May meeting is the library um, because I think we have a lot. So as soon as they send us whatever slides they send either to me or to Pamela, probably it'll be to Pamela, um, we will distribute them, um, but if everybody can look at them and come up with questions, um, because I could tell already there were things that we care about that they don't know about. Um, and so it would be really good for us to be prepared with all the things that we think about that have to do with library accessibility. Okay, um, I guess we're done. Oh, Pat has her hand up. Oh, Pat, okay. I just wonder if you could also send me the materials. Okay, all right, oh, yeah. I will, yep. Sure. Pat, do you have any sense of whether the town would be interested, or the city, whatever, would be interested? <laughs> in, you're be becoming interested a commission? In, yeah. I have, no I, no, I don't. And I think I will, I'm gonna pull together some of the stuff you've been talking about today to share at the next council meeting and I'll bring up that you're considering. When when it was brought up before with Paul, there's this sense that there's not enough money coming from um, disability parking spots, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, tickets on abusing them. So it, it would be very interesting if we could figure out other ways to fund. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I wanna go look at 22G and see what it says, so. Yeah, I can't imagine that the town council would be extremely happy about giving us a little bit of a budget, but maybe five thousand dollars. Who knows? I, yeah, it doesn't think... seem like the kind of thing they like to do. <laughs> but, no um, comment. I'm not supposed <laughs> to talk. Well, you're, you know, you're not, you're not the whole town council, but I can think of people who might not like the idea. Um, okay, so. Um, I think, yeah, I think the library thing has come to a critical uh, juncture. And um, so I think we really need to give our entire next meeting over to them so that they understand um, that accessibility is a little more than what's in the codes. Anyway, um, so I guess I need a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I second. second from someone. Okay. Elise. So Marty and Elise. Mm -hmm. And I guess we'll be back on May 9th at 1130. All right. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Excellent. All right. Bye. Enjoy the spring. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.